introducing Mark Cohen of the PR office in conversation with Rachel Davis Stoller, Chair of Fundraising at Norwood, as part of the 2020 YNBE Industry Speaker Talks. Hello and welcome to you, Mark Cohen. Uh, good morning. Could you tell us a little bit about the PR office? Sure, sure. Thank you. And good morning as well. Um, so the PR office is a uh, international boutique PR and communications agency. That's how we, we uh, describe ourselves. Set up uh, 16 plus years ago by the current chairman, a uh, uh, called Shimon Cohen. Uh, no relation to, to me. We're just uh, two Cohens who work in a uh, work in PR. Um, I joined the business uh, as managing director, um, gosh, three, four years ago now. And we work in seven or eight different industry sectors, including um, professional services, technology, real estate. Um, we do quite a lot of work in the charity sphere. In fact, we've done some work uh, for Norwood, uh, as it happens. Um, Great. Uh, as well as all other types of uh, industries like financial services and, and, and healthcare as well. Not to use too much technical jargon, but we do sort of three core services, which is corporate communication, so that is profile raising for companies and brands. And the other flip side of that is protecting those brands and companies' reputations when things might go a little bit wrong, um, known as oh, wow. crisis communications. So that's the other side of it. And the other bits of what we do are public affairs slash lobbying, which is working in government at Westminster. Brussels helping to advocate on policy issues and then the other part of the work we do is financial communications or also known as invest relations helping publicly quoted companies communicate to investors or private companies promote themselves to raise money um, from investors such as venture capitalists or, or private equity funds. That's enormously varied do you have uh, an area in particular that's your sweet spot that you enjoy the most or or yeah. are you very spread across all of the uh, areas? Yeah, so it is incredibly varied. And you know, one of the great strengths of working in our firm, but also something which is definitely not for everyone, is you don't, you know, one hour to the next, you might be pulled in all different directions. You could be writing a press release for a charity that's just had a, you know, a, a, a patient maybe escape from a mental hospital and you have to deal with the consequences of that. You could be later on in the day writing a press release for a technology company with an uh, exciting innovation that's going to maybe help to tackle COVID. Uh, mm. I started out more in financial communication, so working with FTSE uh, 100, FTSE 250, big publicly traded companies, helping them with their annual reports, annual results, M&A, IPO type work. So helping companies communicate with investors in the listed markets. So that's right. one part of what we do. And I did that in different industry sectors. I worked in the consumer and leisure team. I worked for a bit in a retail team. I did some work in the oil and gas team. That's interesting. So it sounds like the company you've arrived at now mirrors the breadth that you sought in the earlier stage of your career in, in trying to get a, get a handle and experience in a lot of different, that sort of diversification of skill set in yourself yeah. is mirrored in the diversification of skill set at the PR office. So can you tell us how, after that journey, how you ended up at the PR office as an organization? Yeah. So I started out my career in a specialist, small cap, as they call it, agency. So working with smallish companies, publicly traded, mainly in the oil and gas mining space. Mm. And while that was fun for a while, I knew that wasn't me forever. I'm not a specialist kind of guy. I'm, I'm, I'm an inherently a generalist. It's very helpful to be able to turn your hand to different things and not be one of those people in industry or in, in consultancy that says, oh, no, I can't. We, I don't know about that. Art. You know, that's not my area. Right. Well, we have an ethos at the PR office and I get to sort of ha ha how I got here, even though it wasn't entirely planned. It, it was a clear direction, which is, you know, we say yes. We say yes. And then we figure out how to do it afterwards. Now, that doesn't mean we, you know, BS. It doesn't mean that we say things that aren't true. It means that within the scope Kind of, we're talking about communications and PR. You know, we're not doctors and lawyers and and whatever. We we you know we know that we can find a way. And if we can't, we can hire someone or bring in someone, someone who can. And that kind of can-do proactive attitude is a huge sort of cultural ethos of this firm and 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 me personally. If you have the attitude that you can turn your hand to anything, I think that gives you an innate confidence. So certainly, when you are coming into a profession and you're working your way through a profession, whatever it is, 
or whatever whatever career journey you're on i think if you adopt that that mentality of i will try to turn my hand at something then that will give you and translate into a confidence when you are talking to clients when you are um when you're joining together as a team within your organization and you sit around the table and you say right this uh, instruction has come in from this client they they are in this industry they're in this sector this is their this is their problem this is their issue this is the solution that they are looking for we need to give them some options who here's got ideas it's having the it's having the the, the guts to say okay well i haven't done this exact thing before but i have, that's, I have exactly, an idea. that's exactly and you know one of our we've done some work recently on identifying and articulating our cultural values as a firm and, and one of them is bravery just be brave go out oh, there wow. have a go be entrepreneurial think of a solution I mean, you have to understand the context. We're not talking about go and offer advice, you know, financial advice or something completely out of our skill set. However, yeah. within the world of PR communications, it is quite broad. And yeah, be brave. You don't necessarily know the answer. Spend some time researching, asking, brainstorming, and come back, come back with a solution. Yes, I think it's very empowering as well if that bravery has a thoughtful quality to it rather than a brash um exactly it's not recklessness being brave isn't reckless you know they're different exactly. words for, for a reason it's not being foolhardy it's not gambling your client's reputation or their money or, or whatever industry you might be in uh, i'll ask you another question it's a question that always um always interests me when uh, when i'm when i meet new people and, and i'm interested to hear about their career journey could you share with us your best and your worst day in the office so far I had the great privilege um, about four or five years ago to be, and we've been longer now, to be advising the, the government of Sierra Leone in West Africa on mm. how they um, handled their PR response to uh, the Ebola outbreak. Quite interesting, obviously, with what's going on now with COVID and everything like that. But I, I was out in West Africa for quite a while during that period, uh, oh, wow. living and working back and forth to Sierra Leone. And I think probably a, a real highlight, and I remember scribbling it down, thinking one day I might want to sort of remember this, was, was when I, I, I met the president of Sierra Leone for the first time. It was, I think, the first head of state I've ever met, possibly. I met one or two, but I think it was definitely in his office. And it was Sierra Leone, and it's not like exactly the United States, but it was, a, it was just a grandeur of the place. It's a huge desk, and it's the biggest desk I've ever seen. And, I was like, you know, felt like I was a mile away from him and he just seemed like he was 11 foot tall, this guy. <laughs> and I sort of sat down and I had to then present to him the PR communication plan, for basically how we were going to get this country, which is really in the mire, kind of, you know, through this difficult situation and how they could communicate right. what they were doing. And I just, that whole experience of kind of getting there, waiting outside, ushering him, meeting him, was a, you know, it was, was, was really incredible and definitely something I'll kind of, uh, I'll take with me, I think probably for, wow. for the rest of my life. The worst things for me, there's two, two things in, in work, are, are when we lose clients and when we, you know, good people resign. Almost, <laughs> almost every human interaction has a, a learning point from it. A hundred percent. And uh, you know, regardless of how long they've been with us or the size of the contract or it, it hurts just as much, you know, with a client and, and also the, the wins as well. You know, getting a great result for a client, whether they're the biggest client you've ever had or a small project with a small company starting out. But actually, you know, every day when you have a client, um, you know, sometimes they don't always say thank you and they do. It's lovely. But when you know that you have delivered what you try to deliver and in our job, you know, there are so many highs and lows because we're pitching media all the time. Yeah. So every time we have an interaction with a journalist, they have, we have five seconds to impress them. And then you try and translate that into something meaningful in terms of like a press article or, or, or really good sort of content or whatever. Or we have very short amount of time to impress our clients with our ideas and our thinking. When they take that on board and they put that into their annual report or their website mm. or the CEO uses the line you've given them and they add it into an op-ed that they write, those real positive feelings of what keep us going kind of day to day. So you've made a difference. Uh, and in the services industry, so to speak, so consultants, professionals, lawyers, accountants, it's very tempting to look at the challenges to learn from the mistakes to try and do better um, and I think it is important for for all businesses and all MDs and people in senior positions to stop and celebrate the wins and it's interesting because this leads me exactly to to, to something that has been uh, been something on my mind and, and most people's minds over the past few months is 
this extraordinary impact of COVID-19. Can you tell me from your perspective and, and from the PR officer's perspective, what, what particular challenges or what the most difficult challenges COVID has brought to your business? Um, it was just like, whoa, what is going on here? How are we going to manage this? What should we be doing? Should we wait for the government to tell us not to go to the office or should we kind of lock ourselves down sooner? We we're very lucky that we're fully set up to work from home anyway. We have worked mm. from home for two years and we upgraded all laptops and remote working equipment about a year ago anyway. Once it transpired that actually the diversity of our business was such a strength to us because what it meant was we were not so exposed in any one type mm. of sector. But in terms of it, uh, you know, what's the biggest positive um, that you have taken or, or is it more your the galvanised response of your of your team and your staff to I, the challenges? I think the biggest, I mean, there have been some actual career highs during this period in terms of some of the work that we've done. Um, uh, but actually, I don't want to dwell on that because what, what to me is, is, is the most exciting, positive thing that's come out of this is I feel like I've got to know my team mm. and got closer and built bonds with my team better and deeper than I was ever able to do in the old world. And the other aspect of it, I've been more present. I've been doing many more team meetings, albeit virtual, whereas previously I'd have been on a plane or I'd been in a meeting or I'd been in a taxi and I wouldn't have necessarily interacted as much. Well, what I, what I hear from what you've said, the image that I had in my mind is, is that image of you sort of chasing the next goal, whether it's jumping on a plane to do a pitch to a foreign um, organisation or government or whether it's dashing in a taxi from one meeting to the next to lead on a presentation or to, you know, um, have a the crunch crisis meeting and needing to be there as the senior one. Or a nice long lunch with a glass of wine. Let, let, let's not make it seem too boring. <laughs> <laughs> or, yes, and having fun all the while. It's very interesting. History shows us that humans have um, very short memories. But having said that, if what this lockdown i think has done is is pricked the conscious consciousness of, of people and has, has forced the world to stop and stop doing things in exactly the same way so what you were just talking about is the challenge of prioritization and what to prioritize whether it's chasing the chasing the next potential new business instruction versus having the internal team meeting which can always wait and there is commercial sense in that and that's what most rainmakers in, in any consultancy organization will always will always prioritize in that way but what this situation perhaps it gives a potential lessons learned of, if you were looking to hire somebody into the pr office um, starting out their their journey in their career what could they say to you to impress you um, for me it's about attitude it's about someone who wants to learn who's hungry and passionate someone with a fire in their belly so that could translate as asking lots of questions being you know sitting forward in an interview and and talking in you know, detail about something you've done that you really love that type of thing there's not one thing but it, it's just an attitude with a massive big capital a and for those considering at this stage which career to go into what sort of aspects of your work of the PR office how would you sort of describe it to somebody coming in so if you would say if you're this type of person or you're interested in this kind of thing then my kind of career would probably fit. You need to be someone who is uh, wants to learn, who wants to do, who wants to try, wants to get things done even if it's not necessarily everything coming naturally to you you might be a shy person that's okay it's not you know you can be shy and work in PR yeah okay you have to sort of train yourself up to be a bit braver and pick up the phone and have a go but what it might mean is that maybe you're a bit more thoughtful and considered so when you have to dissect a 25 page dossier and come up with the four most kind of important themes you might be better placed to do that than me who's kind of like bored after the first paragraph i, I want to get on the phone to the journalist but i haven't read paragraph seven <laughs> Maybe I should because there's something important there. So, you know, it takes a mix, but I think you need to be willing to kind of meet in the middle. To, to If you're someone who's a bit shyer, to have a go, be brave at getting yourself. Maybe you're never going to be the one who is like, you know, shouting from the rooftops, but that's fine. But they, they can be very annoying. Too many of me can actually be a nightmare. So you want to have a bit of a balance. So you just need to be willing to sort of 
push yourself, whatever it is that maybe you're not strongest at, develop and, and listen and learn. And when people give you feedback, it's not personal. It's not because they don't like you. It's not because they're trying to do anything other than make you better. I have one last question then. Mark, if I could give you a magic wand and that wand could go back in time and change one thing in your career or could make something go away, disappear, that um, you wish wasn't there, a challenge, what would you do with that magic wand? I might save that wand. Because you never know, that one might well come in handy at some stage. But I, I, I genuinely think, I, I, I hope I would be brave enough not to use the wand. It would be very tempting. By then I might just not stop, so the wand might get out of hand. I think that's an excellent and honest answer. Mark, you've been fantastic today. Thank you for all of your insights, all of your honesty. And I hope very much for our audience, uh, there is much to take from this, um, much to learn and and think about and in the meantime I wish you the very best uh, and good luck with uh, all of the the next frontier and challenges uh, that that, uh, that lay ahead and I wish you all the very best so thank you very much indeed. Thank you and thank you I hope it was uh, I, I, I enjoyed doing it and I hope it's of some some value to everyone out there it's been a great pleasure. Brilliant thanks so much speak to you soon Mark. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.